Campaign 2020 is said to be an historic election unlike any other. So photojournalist Brad Now and I hit the Northeast Extension. Our destination, a county where Democrats outnumber Republicans, but it is a place in 2016 that went for Donald Trump. It's a part of the state known to be a battleground, and it's close to Joe Biden's boyhood home. It all comes down to how hard the Democrats are going to work in this election. Mm -hmm. Reporters at the Times Leader newspaper hash out plans for yet another visit from the Trump campaign. He's usually on time, so he'll be here at 2.30. Right. On this overcast gray day, Vice President Mike Pence will be at a construction company a few miles north of Wilkes-Barre. Okay. So you're writing the main story, right? Yes, sir. Okay. In 2016, this area known as Luzerne County tipped Pennsylvania in favor of Donald Trump. He won here by 20 points even though the county delivered for Barack Obama in 08 and 2012. If you look at the numbers, Bill O'Boyle, reporter slash columnist at the Times Leader, has been around for a while and expects Trump will fare well here again. They see Trump, a billionaire, egotistical, sometimes vulgar, condescending, irreverent, as their standard bearer, as their, their, as their leader, as the guy that they can relate to. And uh, it, it, was, it was the phenomenon that came in 16, and it's still here today. I mean, he's their guy. All polling aside, just a cruise down Main Street, it appears much of Luzerne County favors the incumbent. The signs say so. Even the president calls the area Trump country. And Roger Dupuy... I am the managing editor of the Wilkes-Barre Times Leader. ...has to figure out how to keep his staff on top of yet another historic election that places his coverage area in the spotlight. There is insatiable interest in this. In an already economically suppressed area, unemployment numbers out last week are alarming. Luzerne County is nearing 16 percent. Pete's business is fine. Fine. We're, we're, we're surviving. It takes you a year to teach somebody how to do that. <laughs> That's Jerry Ricci, longtime owner of a South Wilkesbury pizza shop, a branch off from his father's business. It's a, a more of a goof proof uh, oven technique. Jerry would prefer to retire soon, but he worries about the economy and the Trump administration's handling of the coronavirus. I don't know uh, yes, caution. If, I, if I am going to vote for him this next uh, uh, election. You would say undecided. Undecided. Just 20 miles north, the scene is reversed. Scranton is Joe Biden's boyhood home. Senator Bob Casey met with us in the shadow of a long shuttered paper company. Here in Lackawanna County, unemployment is above 14 percent. Just in those two counties, you got about 39,000 people out of work, and people expect uh, their candidate for president to have an economic plan and to have a plan to tackle the virus. Joe Biden does on both. Casey expects Biden to do well in Lackawanna County, and that's about the only place up in northeastern Pennsylvania. Well, politics has always had a, uh, a rough edge here. It's always been competitive. I've been through some of it. Sarah Donahue, a middle school teacher in Luzerne County, says it's obvious the area is proving again to be valuable political real estate. And they're here in northeast PA. Absolutely, yes. Both of them within one week. Why? President and vice president. I think they just know that this area is a really important part of our state. And, and the way this area goes is the way that the election is going to go. Part two of the series, Up the Northeast Extension, airs tomorrow on Eyewitness News at 4. We'll talk then about why politics is historically brutal in the former coal regions of northeastern Pennsylvania.